Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. Our presentation is the philosophy of the evolution in women manners of living throughout the centuries. Our presentation scope is around Malaysian women. Women manners of living is just another term for lifestyle. So when we talk about women lifestyle, it's not just about what they do, but it's also how do they live their life. In traditional era, women is seen as someone who is responsible to do domestic matters such as things at home. So instead of wanting to do what they want to do, women have to do what women should do at that time being. I'm not saying that in the modern era women totally against that but things that seem to be compulsory back then has now become a, an option of a woman to choose which in a way give a woman freedom of choice. In this presentation we are going to go in depth into certain certain aspects of women's life where changes has been made and it's physically and feasibly seen. What is the first thing that pop up in your mind? Is it girls go to school or the picture of Nilofa and other successful women come across your mind? Women education is actually more than that. An African proverb says, if we educate a boy, we educate one person. But if we educate a girl, we educate a family and a whole nation. By sending a good girl to school, she is far more likely to ensure that her children also receive an education. As many claim, investing in a girl's education is investing in a nation. In the history, our great-great-great-grandmother have been taught only by their parents since their childhood. Many of them seem not to be going to school. Everything and anything they know is that they should be able to complete household tasks and as the preparation for them to become a spouse later. At this time and age, men and women were indeed eligible to receive whatever sort of education knowledge and experience and have no trouble pursuing it at a higher degree. However, you obviously understand, in the old days, most women were not allowed to study at the same degree as men. What's making the ancient Malay family fan of the girls go to school? Typically, boys are assigned the responsibility for seeking jobs, while girls assist with house chores like cooking and cleaning. There is also a belief that women should not be in the same field as men because if they were granted a chance to go to school, they would just concentrate on seeking love and forget about their main hobbies. As we all know, it was very unusual to find a woman who was excellent at reading and writing in earlier civilization. Even our mother and grandparents who is living in the recent times can read with a decent pronunciation and grammar. Usually, the girls who were sent to school in the past have a family background that is already educated or from the rich family. Back then, the dilemma of women's education has become one of the most important topic addressed in traditional Malaya literature. For example, Al Imam magazine, written from 1906 to 1908, has hardly fought for women's right to have education. The idea of educating women also continued to be spread through several important magazines and newspapers such as Panduan Guru, Majalah Guru, and Bulan Melayu. Today, women's position is more family-oriented than self-fulfillment, meaning that family is the priority when a woman had to make a choice between work and family. In such a way, the present Malay women are caught up in the dilemma between the new challenges of life and traditions. Even after the formation of nation itself, the issue of women is still unresolved. Some of them are prevented from receiving education due to the condition and status of their families. There must be a lot of issues involving women, from the issue of being raped, to the financial problems, to the single mothers that keep getting worse. In fact, even in the employment sector, discrimination against women still occurs a lot regardless of her status as a single mother or a daughter who supports their family. The economic progress and improved standard of living since the country's independence have enabled women in Malaysia to enjoy greater access to education, work opportunities and greater participation in politics. They have achieved more autonomy than ever and their progressive presence in the political and professional arenas once dominated by men reflects this. 
In this modern era of the Y and Z generation, Malaysian women project an optimistic and executive picture as in both the public and private sectors. They are involved in various careers and decision-making positions. In the political arena, a new picture has emerged of female leaders and activists. They are more educated, more articulate in voicing the needs and desires of women, more conscious of national growth and more sensitive to present development issues, especially those people who work against women. In the traditional era, women would not be allowed to give views or suggestions because they were not well educated as men. Women were ineligible for leadership positions and were generally considered to have an inferior intellect to their brothers. So they cannot contribute ideas to improve society even though the ideas are thoughtful. We can see the increasing number of women's participation in parliament from 1959 to 1999. Since independence, women have been on an upward trajectory in participation in roles of power sharing and decision making in politics and the economy. There has been a steady rise in female voters and political party membership, as well as in the number of elected candidates for women. The number of women in elected and appointed positions shows the same encouraging signs of progression. For instance, the new focus of the major political parties following the founding of Putri Amno in early 2001 is to step up their recruitment from all walks of life of young women supporters. As we can see now, women in Generation Y and Z have the opportunity to lead a community and come out with one team like Putri Amno. This shows that women have the power to share and make their own decision. Women in the job sector In modern era, the women that have the slave job is increasing. The job sector in Malaysia is increasing and this causes women to have many options to choose a good job. Examples of job sector in Malaysia are engineering and technical and programming, accounting and finance, art, design and media, education, medical and health, telecommunication, hospitality and catering, sales and marketing and others. In this era of globalization, the flexible job market is growing exponentially. Today, women are becoming more independent because they have an adequate salary. Much less. The percentage of female labor participation in 2018 is 50.59%, in 2019, 50.75%, while in 2020, it's 50.9%. Economic development has a profound influence on job trends and related to urban migration. For the first time, they attracted a numerous numbers of young and married Malay women from village into urban factories. The greater participation rate of women in the workforce of the economic sectors is the product of an improvement in their level of education which has significantly increased their participation at the professional level. More jobs, higher wages and improved living conditions have greatly reduced gender disparities and increased women's social and economic status in Malaysia. In traditional era, the job sector in Malaysia is small, so not much women get opportunities to choose good jobs that they want. So not and not much women in the traditional era have a stable job. In Generation S, the bulk of female labor force is located in the agricultural sector. More than half of the women working in the agricultural sector were interested in the cultivation of rubber and less than one third in the cultivation of paddy. Malays were the majority of engaged in the cultivation of paddy, although substantial proportions of Chinese and India rubber were, uh, rubber were also found. In terms of education, educational requirements and flexible working hours, the prevalence of women in agriculture can be attributed to the ease of entry, which, is, which has allowed women to more easily combine the responsibility of household and child care obligations with income earning activities. Percentage of female labor force participation in proportion of females in agriculture of Malays from the year 1921 until 1957 is 50%, 53%, Chinese is 66%, while Indians is 69%. In the administrative and managerial occupational committee, the female labor force was compared to four men. In the, this is manifestual discrimination against women's jobs. The high level management and supervisory laws are dominated by men and women are primarily found in position at the lower end of the occupation hierarchy. Next aspect is fashion. So we talk about women lifestyle, we can never go out of style. 
Yes, they have various types of fashion for various types of vocation, but the changes in fashion is widely seen when women started to enter the economic sector. The biggest changes that can be seen in fashion is definitely towards Muslim women as they are restricted to the religious guideline. As women in traditional era tend to just stay in the house and do household chores, they are expected to follow the clothing guideline to the point where there's a book made by Tina Safendi about the ethic of Malay clothing which is Never wear clothes again tradition Do not overdress in Never wear clothes from thin materials and never wear clothes that show aura However, as years goes by, Muslim women especially they started experimenting new types of clothing as they're trying to fit in with the growing economy and growing environment around them. Women nowadays have participated in any kind of job sector. Let's say women who work in the engineering sector need to go to the under construction area. They need to wear something comfortable for them to walk back and forth. So instead of wearing skirts, they can wear slack, they can wear palazzo, they can wear any type of clothes. And at the same time, they can style themselves as there are so many designs and shapes. So the clothes will look good on them. As for those who work indoors, instead of wearing baju kurung all the time, they can wear abaya, they can wear juba, so there's a lot of choices. So basically, being a fashionable person somehow build confidence and make them feel good on themselves. From the bar chart, 82.7% which is 62 respondents prefer to practice human lifestyle. However, there are 17.3% which is art. 13 respondents prefer to practice women lifestyle back then. This is because nowadays there are many opportunities for women to stand out and be independent compared to back then which is during the traditional era. Our group has conducted a survey using a Google form and the question we asked was Did you agree with the statement educated women are more likely to have fewer, healthier and better educated children? From the pie chart, it is clear that the majority of the respondents agree with the statement. 70.7% answered yes and 29.3% answered no. So it is clear that our society is already open to women education. Besides, we can see that women education give a positive impact in the family sector. In my opinion, you don't have to be a woman to know that women's education is relevant. From child mortality to epidemic spreading, Women face numerous challenges that education can attempt to overcome. As a female student, I would prefer to live in the modern education system. Education is really one of the best things that a person can have, especially that they need to build another way of supporting their own self in the future. Apart from that, modern education teaches us about the skills required today. From the chart, 94.6% which is 71 respondents agree that women's opinion nowadays will be accepted by other people. However, there are quite some respondents which are 4 respondents deny it. This is because nowadays women have an opportunity to participate and involve in any organization such as the Women's Aid Organization and All Women's Action Society. The purpose of this organization is to engage and advocate by legislation, policies and structural reforms with government and non-governmental organization for the eradication of factors leading to women's oppression and subordination and also working to strengthen women's rights in Malaysia by creating a curriculum to educate the public and officials such as police officers about women's leadership and the domestic violence that women face. It shows that they have the power to defend their opinion compared to back then. In a traditional era, women do not have space to stand out because at that time, all the decision making was dominated by men. Hence, we can conclude that women's opinion nowadays will be accepted by other people compared to before because of the opportunity that has been given. From the pie chart, there are 74.7% respondents do not agree with the statement women place always end in the kitchen despite the high education level and 25.3% agree with these statements. The respondents do not agree with this statement because not everyone women will end up quitting their jo jobs, some even capable of challenging the men and be better than them. The other reason is women will never get to run from the kitchen, but women with high education level and good jobs got everything in their kitchen, all those pressure cooker, air fryer, cordial plates and all the luxury items in their kitchen rather than cheap plates. 
The others also think if someone is educated, they know how to survive even if their marriage not being well and plus they can do work from home because they're educated so they're creative and can make money from home. While the others that agree with this statement because when women have a husband, family, children, of course, women needs to cook for them. Others think because it is Malay mindset, women is responsible to do everything in the kitchen. In modern era, women that have stable job is increasing than women in traditional era. This is because the job sector in Malaysia is keep increasing and women in modern era have a lot of choice to choose the job. Not like in traditional era, most of women involved in agricultural sector. The high level management in traditional era mostly conquered by the men. Not like in the modern era, the number of women that involved in high level management keep increasing. This is because there is a lot of women that get the higher education. Women's ability in traditional era was underestimated by the others. When the year is increasing, the number of women that involved in agricultural sector keep decreasing. In my opinion, I prefer economic participation of women in the modern era because there is a lot of job sector in modern era. So the number of women that get a stable job keep decreasing. A lot of women have a higher salary because they get the good job with their education qualification. Women of this can be more rich than men with their own hard work. A survey had been conducted to know if women agree that wearing traditional attire in their daily life is no longer a compulsory thing to practice. So here's the result, majority agree but some of them don't. So basically we can say that wearing clothes is not just to cover body but at the same time it's a mixture of self-confidence and also flaunt social statuses. But at the same time women still manage to uphold their religion and traditional values. Until today some people can just follow the old guidelines just like usual. They can just wear baju kurung all the time. But for those who love the changes in fashion, they still understand the culture and the religious barrier and they do not cross that. However, being moderately dressed is the best way as Malay custom as well as religion teaching practice simple and humble ways of dressing. In conclusion, women in Malaysia have made significant progress from the traditional era to the modern era in many ways such as in education, job sector, fashion and also decision making and power sharing. In education, there are increased literacy rates and enrollment in schools and tertiary institutions are indicators of their access to education. The number of participants in non-formal education programs offered by various agencies reflects the accessibility of education opportunities. Furthermore, the most important changes in the Malaysian women's status and leadership role since independence have come from their increased participation in political parties, elected and appointed officers, women organization and legislation. The trend towards higher aspiration in politics can be further supported by the already highly visible trend in women's participation in the economy, education and health industries. The evidence that we can observe nowadays that women's decision making and also their power sharing can be accepted compared to the traditional era where there is no opportunity and space for them to stand out. So from this evaluation in women's manner of living throughout centuries, we can see the differences between traditional and modern era and their progress.